We begin this video tour in a completely different country, in Canada, our neighbor to the north. We'll spend a minute or so showing you the drive into the Buffalo region, show you a little bit of downtown, and then take a drive into the worst area of Buffalo I could find. The day was Wednesday, January 8, 2020, at about 11 a.m. To get into Buffalo, you have to cross at the U.S.-Canadian border at Niagara Falls. There's actually two Niagara Fallses, one on the Canadian side and one on the U.S. side. And Buffalo is over here, about 20 minutes away. The Canadian side of Niagara Falls is very touristy, clean, and offers a far better view of the falls. Here's a five-second look. It's somewhat underwhelming and, in the wintertime, quite chilly. Then you have the U.S. side of Niagara Falls, called Niagara Falls, New York, which is pretty much a dump. Here's the scene on Main Street in Niagara Falls, New York. And here's what one block of Niagara Falls, New York looks like. People in Buffalo say they're embarrassed by the way Niagara Falls looks, and they hope that one day it gets cleaned up, because it's a shame that the first thing you see when you drive into the U.S. from Canada at this location is this. From this destitute dive of Niagara Falls, we drove into Buffalo, a drive which took about 21 minutes. Here in Buffalo, the temperature was about 23 degrees, but it felt like zero. The wind was whipping and light snow fell throughout the day. I think it actually lightly flurries here just about every day due to the lake effect. Blizzards regularly shut this city down completely, but not on this day. Locals said this was nothing, and several asked quite poignantly why we were traveling to Buffalo in the middle of winter. While observing the snowfall, I remembered I still carried the dim sum dumpling I'd hidden in my pocket in Toronto. Buffalo's a pretty cool place. The downtown area is old and somewhat basic, holding on to the Rust Belt stigma I'd expected to see. The best part of Buffalo are the local neighborhoods, which are actually within walking distance from downtown. Among older homes are neighborhood bars and restaurants. It's like a big city with a small town feel. Since I was in Buffalo, I asked where the best Buffalo wings were. I was sent to a small place called Gabriel's Gate. The wings were so good, I forgot to take a picture until they were gone. We also met people at a place called Founding Fathers. They're big Trump supporters. Everybody there was nice. In fact, all the neighborhood bars were full of friendly people who were good spirited, even during a windy, gray, middle of winter day. Now the ghetto part. Oh, we found the hoods. No, not here. These are abandoned projects just outside of downtown. The really bad area is on Buffalo's Lower East Side. We crisscrossed into the Buffalo neighborhoods of Emsley, Broadway, Fillmore, and Lovejoy. It's a smallish city, Buffalo is, with a population that's dwindled to 250,000 people. At its height, Buffalo's population was nearly 600,000 people up into the late 50s. Buffalo's main advantage was water, but after technology improvements in the mid-1900s, people didn't need water for transportation or power. So many people left the Buffalo area. More left when steel mills and car makers left. These neighborhoods are gritty, ugly, and dangerous. This part of town was home to poor immigrants originally, and now has become the part of Buffalo that truly looks as bad as you can imagine, with blocks containing more vacant lots than homes. The reason we chose this neighborhood was it was described on an obscure forum called Cyberbia. In a thread devoted to Buffalo neighborhoods, we saw this and knew this was the neighborhood we'd visit. If you're going to avoid an area, make it this area, the forum states. This is the heart of the East Side Ghetto, the area where you hear about the most drug shootings, fires, crime, and so on. The only businesses are gritty Yemeni sea stores and bodegas, a few carry-out restaurants, and guys with names like Gat T and Killa K standing on every few blocks selling you-know-what. If you're standing on a corner and you're white, you should expect trouble. If you're black and you're not wearing urban-style clothing, you should expect trouble. For some reason, whenever Canadians get lost in Buffalo, they always end up here. Here it is, in all its glory.
Hey guys, if you learned something new or you just like this video, make sure to like it. And if you really like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get all of our videos about what it's like to live in different places in America. Peace.